This is an important day in the life of the university, a day to celebrate the success of our graduates. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this ceremony and to formally declare this congregation of the university open. Please be seated. Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, and of course, graduates. As Vice-Chancellor, it is a great privilege to welcome you to Portsmouth, whether you know our great city or are coming here for the first time. I am honored to be sharing this important occasion with you, our graduates, and with your family and friends. On behalf of all staff at the university, I would like to congratulate our graduates on your well-earned achievement. I am immensely proud of your commitment to your studies and your broader development as worthy citizens, as you should be also. It is an amazing fact that this year, over 2,600 of our students were active in volunteering, from helping children to learn to supporting those suffering dementia, our students give a tremendous amount to this community. As we are all too aware, we are living through a period of tremendous uncertainty. There is unrest in the world, and closer to home, Brexit remains unresolved. At graduation last year, I said, soon the UK will leave the European Union and was hopelessly wrong. Whatever your views on Brexit, we do need a resolution so that the country can focus on other issues. University funding is one of those issues. A recent report, the Augur Review, recommended that universities receive less money through tuition fees but graduates repay their loans for longer, for up to 40 years after graduation. If this report is implemented, graduates sitting in this room in future years can expect to pay more for less investment in their education. And I just don't believe that will appeal to them. But cutting the tuition fee cap will generate some favorable newspaper headlines and does appeal to some politicians. Political short-termism is one of the biggest problems our society faces. Collectively, we are a long way from making the changes needed to mitigate the effects of climate change or think about the significant social implications of technological change and the rise of artificial intelligence. In the face of all of this, it is sometimes tempting to be pessimistic. And then a day like today comes along and I see passionate, highly skilled and educated people such as yourselves, full of ideas, ready and prepared to reshape our world. Seeing you graduate today is a tremendous feeling and a welcome reminder that whatever our current difficulties, our future is in good hands. Of course, that does not mean that your future journeys are going to be easy. But what is clear is that the demand for the kind of skills you have developed continues to grow. Since 2010, since 2010 more than 2 million new jobs have been created in the UK. Around two thirds of those jobs have been in highly skilled professions. We believe it is the university's core purpose to prepare our students for their future work and careers. Indeed, at Portsmouth, we are creating a new breed of university, one where learning is rooted in the real world and prepares you to make a success of whatever path you choose to follow. We pride ourselves in our research that changes lives and extends the boundaries of knowledge. 
In June, the university was awarded £5.8 million from Research England to help find a solution to one of the world's greatest environmental challenges, plastic waste. Earlier this year, our Institute for Cosmology and Gravitation was awarded £2 million to continue its world-leading research into dark energy and gravitational waves, researching the very boundary of our universe. The university is constantly innovating. This month, entrepreneur and philanthropist Dame Stephanie Shirley opened the university's Future Technology Centre a £12 million facility designed to teach engineering in a new way to make it more appealing to a broader range of students, particularly women who are underrepresented in the profession. And this summer, we began construction of our new indoor sports facility, which will be the first with a swimming pool rated climate excellent by the UK government. You should feel confident that you are graduating from a university that is recognised as part of the modern global elite of universities, tackling the real challenges of the 21st century. When many of you joined the university three years ago, we were ranked 43rd in the UK Guardian League tables. Now we are ranked 21st. But please remember that in graduating today, you are part of a privileged minority that has had the advantages of a university education. With that privilege comes responsibility. Please reflect upon your obligations as graduates of our university. You are trustees of the skills and abilities you have developed. I urge you to use your talents to help enrich society, to make a difference for the benefit of others. Raise aspirations among all those you encounter and set an example in behaviour and achievement that others will seek to emulate. You have lived in a diverse environment during your time with the university. Take that appreciation of difference and culture and friendship with you in all that you do. As you think about achieving your greatest ambitions, think about the exceptional team you have around you. You've had the support of the university community all through your time here. Our excellent staff have provided a supportive environment in which you have learnt, lived and flourished. Your fellow students have no doubt lifted you through the tough times and celebrated with you in the good times and will remain lifelong friends. And of course, those closest to you will have been your most important team. Parents, partners, children, wider family and friends have all helped by providing encouragement, a shoulder to cry on, a listening ear. But most of all, they will have kept faith in you and willed you to succeed. So I think it's appropriate that you, our graduates, should stand up and with a warm round of applause, join me in thanking your family and friends that are here today. Please stand up. A warm round of applause. Fantastic, that was brilliant, thanks. Please be seated now. That was excellent and deserved. The university has been part of your team, supporting you throughout your time here, and we'd like to remain part of your team in the future. We want you to be successful because your successes and achievements will reflect well upon your university and of course, the success of your university reflects well upon you. You are the second cohort of graduates who will be asked to take part in what is called the Graduate Outcome Survey. 
at some point in the next two years, you will be contacted and asked questions about your career path since leaving us. Please do engage with this survey. We always strive to improve and this survey will give us vital information to help us do exactly that. Today is just the beginning of a lifelong relationship with your university as members of an international community of Portsmouth graduates. Please make use of our excellent alumni association and keep in touch as you continue your journey through life. We want to know where you go next as you will be the future leaders, thinkers, creators, and innovators. Be a force for positive change within a world that desperately needs your talents. And when you are successful, please come back to visit us and be part of our elite team supporting future generations of Portsmouth students. I urge you to live by the values of your university in all that you do. Be responsible, be open, be ambitious, and never settle for second best. I congratulate you on your awards and wish you every success for your future. Thank you. In addition to all the awards to our students today, we are also awarding an honorary doctorate. The university has resolved to confer the degree of Doctor of the University, honoris causa, upon Jason Mallinson. <laughs> Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to take you on a journey. It's an imaginary journey, and when you hear about it, you may be pleased that it's imaginary. It starts at the mouth of the Thuan Lung Cave in Chiang Rai province of Thailand. The cave is named the Great Cave and Water Source of the Sleeping Lady Mountain. The phrase water source is significant, as we shall hear. Okay, let's go on our journey. We should really turn the lights out because it's a journey in darkness, but I think we better keep them on. We enter the cave and we climb down for a bit. It's quite spacious at this stage, but is going deeper underground and interestingly seems to be getting narrower. Suddenly at the end of the entrance chamber, the passage gets very narrow, hardly wide enough to get through, but we manage it. We wriggle uphill a little bit and then down a steep slope and then we see it for the first time. Thick, brown, muddy water. Half filling the narrow tunnel, we are squeezing along. The water is chest high, and there is enough room to breathe above it. So that's lucky. Over a small lip and further along the tunnel, but this time as we crawl downhill, closely entombed by the rock, we are not so lucky. The tunnel ahead is completely filled with water. The good news is that we have scuba tanks and masks. The bad news is that in places, the tunnel is too narrow for them to be worn on our back. Nevertheless, we fight our way through six flooded sections of the tunnel and emerge from the last dive back into another half-filled tunnel that opens up into a small cave with a ledge called Patea Beach. We have traveled about two kilometers from the entrance of the cave, half of it underwater, but we have found the reason for our trip. Twelve frightened boys and their coach, members of the Wild Boars soccer team, who have been trapped by flash flooding two kilometers underground for nine days with enough provisions for one hour. <clears throat> the story of the Thai boys and their rescues um, gripped the attention of the world a year ago. No one was sure if they could survive without food, with falling oxygen levels, rising carbon dioxide and rising water levels. Even if they were still alive, could they be rescued? Could the water be pumped from the cave? No. Could a tunnel be drilled down to them? No. The only way in was the trip we have just taken. 
The only way out was going to be the reverse of that trip, but this time carrying a non-diving 12-year-old boy whilst holding onto a right rope to guide you through zero visibility water and trying to avoid touching the rock that so closely surrounds you and thereby dislodging the diving mast of the child and drowning him. You have to take your time, but time is running out. The water levels are rising and it will soon be months before the cave will be accessible again. The sense of sadness, pessimism and challenge increased significantly when former Thai Navy diver Saman Gunan, who had rushed to volunteer to help, died on a dive into the cave. Saman was 38 years old. For one person here in the Guildhall today, the trip I've just described wasn't imaginary. Jason Mallinson did it. In fact, he did it several times. Jason was one of the four leading UK divers from the British Cave Rescue Council who volunteered to try and rescue the boys. Jason is a Portsmouth graduate. He sat there. He began cave diving in, Yorkshire, in the Yorkshire Dales at the age of 17. His previous exploits have led him to set distance and depth records in caves all over the world, from the deep jungle caves of Mexico to world record-breaking dives in the Pozo Azul cave system of northern Spain. Jason led the team there in 2010, where a dive distance of 8.8 .8 kilometers from the entrance was achieved, requiring immersion times of 12 hours and one week of camping underground. Jason has pushed the boundaries of what was thought possible in the elite world of cave diving exploration. He has searched for and rescued people in caves all over the world, including in Mexico in 2004, where six people were successfully, successfully dived out of a flooded cave. The skills that Jason acquired over nearly 30 years of cave exploration and rescue diving served 12 boys and their coach well in those tense days a year ago. Jason brought three of the boys all the way out of the cave. Four boys a day were rescued from the cave, except on the last day when five were rescued as flooding was imminent and the time was running out. Someone had to do a double run through the flooded section of the cave, and that someone was Jason Mallinson, who brought another boy part of the way out before returning to Patea Beach. Eight hours later, Jason emerged from the cave system with the last boy to be rescued. This, ladies and gentlemen, is amazing stuff. Everyone was rescued. In the Extreme Environments Laboratory here at the University of Portsmouth, we deal with a lot of survival stories there is no doubt that this rescue will go down in history as one of the greatest. What happened over those weeks is a remarkable testimony to friendship, human endurance, bravery, and the length some people will go to to save somebody else's child. This is neatly summarized in Jason's reflection on the rescue. He said, it was one of the most difficult and dangerous and risky things I have ever done. Not in terms of my own safety, but in terms of the people I was responsible for. I have never done anything as risky as that, and I don't think I will ever again. Having got to know Jason a little over the recent months, I'm not so sure that's true. Jason Mallinson received the Queen's Gallantry Medal for exemplary acts of bravery in the 2019 New Year's Honours list. He won TV's Pride of Britain. In these times of self-obsession and superficiality, it is important that people like Jason Mallinson, brave, modest, and talented real people who volunteer, voluntarily involve themselves in such rescues are recognized for their bravery and altruism. And that is precisely what we are going to do now. Chancellor, I present Jason Mallinson for the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. By the authority of the university, I admit you to the award of Doctor of the University, Honoris Causa.
I just need a couple of minutes to compose myself after that oration. I'm choking up a little bit there. <laughs> so I'd like to take the opportunity again to thank the university for this award. My years at the university, or Portsmouth Polytechnic, it was, as it was then known in the late 80s, were some of the best years of my life. Lifelong friends were made and opportunities for expanding my horizons were numerous. I travelled all over the UK with the Polytechnic Caving Club. I went on my first foreign caving expeditions, taught myself to dive, and had a brilliant time doing it. Portsmouth has changed a lot since 1986, but some of the familiar sites are still around, down Albert Road or Elm Grove, the areas where I lived when I was in Portsmouth. I did a mechanical engineering degree and gained valuable industry experience doing a four-year sandwich course. Again, this put me in good stead for subsequent life and broadened my experience further. I had vague ideas of becoming an engineer, but somehow that never happened. I was never a brilliant degree student. I could have got a better degree, but they always say a 2-2 is a drinker's degree. <laughs> well, whilst my studies were obviously part of those years, I believe it was some of the other experiences that formulated my subsequent life and forge me into who I am now. Organising and participating in expeditions, surviving and flourishing in harsh underground environments, often alone and also with others. Being responsible not only for yourself, but other people's safety. Responsibility for finances, cost of living, accommodation, all things I'm sure you are now familiar with. These things and more were the ideal recipe for my young and eager life cravings. All those years ago, I could never have imagined that I would be stood up here now to receive this honor for doing something that comes naturally and that has been a passion for most of my adult life. What I can say to any graduates or even undergraduates is, don't miss those opportunities to do something different, something outside the box something that may lead you down a life path that you have never even conceived of. You never know where it, where it might take you. Keep pushing ahead if you are confident in your abilities and ignore the detractors. The rewards are there. Sometimes they are a long time coming, but perseverance, tenacity, and often stubbornness are often the qualities that are required to achieve your high goals. Thank you very much. So now we come to the main part of today's ceremony and the one that I'm sure you are all looking forward to, which is the graduation of our students. But before we do that, there are some formal words that the academic registrar and the chancellor have to say to officially confirm uh, that everyone that's graduating has a right to do so. They will be congratulated when they walk across the stage by our chancellor, Karen Blackett, and then by the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Creative and Cultural Industries, Tre Professor Trevor Keeble. Chancellor, as Academic Registrar, I confirm that those presented at this ceremony have successfully completed their studies and have satisfied all conditions and requirements of the University. By the authority of the university, I confirm that all those who are duly qualified are hereby admitted to the awards for which they are presented. Chancellor, I present to you the following successful candidates from the School of Architecture. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in Architecture, Vail Abdullah. <laughs> With first class honors, Julian Adams. <laughs> Enea Ademai.
With first class honors and with the J. Potts Prize for the best integration of CAD drawing and design, Haya Abulushi. <laughs> Mohammed Alhendi. <laughs> Jack Anderson. With first class honors and with the Martin Harvey Prize for outstanding design work, Paulina Alaskaita. <laughs> Phoebe Atfield. <laughs> Amy Atkinson. <laughs> Subhadra Oman. Depar Ong, <laughs> Ahmed Azam, <laughs> Kelly Ben, <laughs> Sukmeet Burke, <laughs> Benjamin Booth, <laughs> Bedor Borsley. With first class honors, Gregory Bowen. <laughs> Elliot Ray. <laughs> With the prize of the award year student who has made an outstanding voluntary contribution to the life of the School of Architecture, Danny Birdfield. <laughs> With first class honors, Rachel Butt. With first class honors, Jack Clark. <laughs> with first class honors and with the RIBA prize, best demonstration in third year architecture, a successful integration of construction with design work, Isabel Davies. <laughs> with first class honors, Marco Dinka. Christina Dumitrescu. Sarah Aldashan. Jemima Garba. James Gibb. With first class honors, Lewis Grace. With first class honors and with the Hayes Prize for best critical writing in third year architecture, Augusta Gray. <laughs> Amelia Grubb. <laughs> Jamie Gunner. <laughs> Siti Hamza. <laughs> with first class honors, Matthew Humby. Fadi Isa. <laughs> Dina Jalaf. <laughs> Olawale James. <laughs> Lukman Abdullahi Kalamu. <laughs> Gugon Kapoor. Bryony Kirby. <laughs> Hannon Kirkwood. <laughs> With first class honors, Karina Kolishnaikaite. <laughs> Alex Lee. <laughs> Thomas Layton. Erica Karen Lowe. With first class honors, Kazia McSherry. James Mee.
Susan Mika Jiba. Elisa Marikan. With first class honors, Nathaniel Peter Morse. With first class honors, Tyler Muhebwa. Sagar Muta. Alirio Nazarete. With first class honors and with the Dibbon Prize for demonstrating an understanding of construction and materials and with the RIBA Prize for overall achievement and excellence, Theodor Nedyakov. <laughs> Eugene Nikoporets. <laughs> Catherine Pugh. <laughs> ben Robinson. George Robinson. With first class honors, Mateusz Roganzinski. Polak Sani. Khalifa Al Khazariji. Adam Tanusi. Naveen Sarah. Irina Slavova. Alexandra Stoyanova. Guni Topal. Joseph True. Christopher Turk. Craig Vales. With first class honors, Adam Vallman. Adam Von Perret. Amber Von Perret, I'm sorry. Thomas Whitaker. Bethany Wright. Megan Wynn. <laughs> Mohammed Zakaria. <laughs> Ishmael Zaman. <laughs> Simonetta Zavodny. <laughs> Sorry. Are they here? Rufalda. Yafar. <laughs> Fatima Sarabala Muhammad. <laughs> Saif Osama Fati Mehana. <laughs> Samuel Dale. <laughs> Bartholomew Nagoma. Courtney Littlechild. With a Bachelor of Arts in Interior Architecture and Design, Melissa Aitken. With first class honors, our Kalfan Rashid Al Shibli. Monica Alitrari. Julia Arbid. Margarita Agridu. Patecha Begum. Rachel Chu. With first class honors, Lily Cousins. 
Roberto da Silva Agrela. Jomel Daggio. Hannah Dawson. Catherine Gear. With first class honors and the Interior Architecture and Design Prize for the best dissertation, Sophie Griffith. Gazelle Juvench. Elisa Hayward. Lucy Horgan. With first class honors, Hao Zhen Wang. Danny Yao. Deborah Ionish. Bradley John. Amber Jones. Sharna Jones. Emma Karasinski. Aisha Kwok. Prabhasha Limbachia. John Mark Lona. Kane McKenzie. With first class honors and the Interior Architecture and Design Prize for Color and Light, Adele Miller. Catherine Milgate. With first class honors and the University of Portsmouth Art Collection Award, Rebecca Mills. With first class honors and with the University of Portsmouth Art Collection Award, Christina Navilaite. Pei <laughs> Ki New. <laughs> Elizabeth Pode. <laughs> Joel Zaki. Lucy Smith. I. Katarini Spano. Laura Spencer. Jessica Staley. With first class honors, Nuseli Tilki. With the Interior Architecture and Design Prize for the most improved student, Phoebe Turnbull. <laughs> Louise Williams. <laughs> Tiffany Wong. <laughs> Yen Ni Wong. Toyosi Kukuyoi. Adam Shemgogogera. For the Master of Architecture Award, with the RIBA South Prize Detail in Architecture, Ahmad Mukif Mohammed Naim. With distinction, and with the Architecture PLB Sustainable Design Award, Samuel Akakpo. <laughs> with distinction, Audu Akange.
Hanya Akbari. With distinction, Dominic Allen. With the Gavin Gray Award for Best Masters of Architecture Year Two Collaborative Work, Ricardo Aristo. With distinction, Inan Babur. Anna Berkman. With distinction, Kieran Clark Taylor. James Darcy. Alicia De Solba. Jamie Fall. With the Gavin Gray Award for Best Masters of Architecture Year Two Collaborative Work, Young Hao Fu. Caitlin Giddens Byrne. Sam Gravio. Jumhor Gyokche Pana. With distinction, Jennifer Hagen. Adam Holmes. With distinction, Anthony Hoskins. Ryan Hutchison. Louisa Yonu. With the Gavin Gray Award for Best Masters of Architecture Year Two Collaborative Work, Nurul Jailani. Tadusz Yashinsky. Rosalind John. Karen Lee. With distinction, Ada Damola Michael. With distinction, and with the Architecture PLB Sustainable Design Award, Paul Moss. With distinction, and with the RIBA South Prize Highest Standard of All-Around Excellence in the Masters of Architecture, Adrian Papworth. Mark Phelps. Thomas Pitcher. With distinction and with the Chris Henderson Drawing Prize, Zoe Reese. With distinction and with the Hayes Prize for Best Critical Writing at the Masters of Architecture, Ida Rorvik. Eniola Shonusi. Claudia Georgiana Stefanawaya. With distinction, Vicky Stiles. Christiana Theokoros. Sanka Teruvakatil Gopal. With distinction, Richard Waker. Shuja Zheng. I present to you the following successful candidates from the School of Art, Design and Performance. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in Drama and Performance, Ellie Barrett. (laughs) 
with first class honours, Morgan Channel. <laughs> Shannon Doherty. <laughs> Konstantinos Drosinos. <laughs> Alfie Emery. <laughs> Holly Farrell. George Gambles. <laughs> With the Art Design and Performance Studentship Award, Victoria Holman. <laughs> Jamie Henville. <laughs> Joshua Kelly. And Glinda Marley. With first class honours, Neve Marry. Ashley Mills. Holly Morrison. Isabel Nielsen. Cameron Olive. With first class honours, Alexandra Papadatos. With first class honours, Andy Perez. Dennis Rauhat. Fedrat Sadat. With first class honours, Max Silver. <laughs> Lucy Springett. <laughs> With first class honours, Chelsea Lee Sutton. <laughs> Elliot Venables. <laughs> James West. AJ Wright. <laughs> Sadiq Akanmu. Bachelor of Arts in Fashion and Textile Design with the W.S. Chivers Memorial Scholarship, Amy Arnold. <laughs> with first class honours, Megan Capaldi Tallon. <laughs> Jessica Caspell. With first class honours and with the Graduate Fashion Week Talent of Tomorrow Prize and with the finalist prize for the Batsford Prize for Fashion, Hao Chun Chen. <laughs> Ermi Chowdhury. Georgia Stephanie Dennis. Hibbard. With first class honours and with the two Women's Wear Scholarship finalist prize and with the runner up prize for the Batsford Prize for Fashion, Courtney Hoare. Robin Joseph Clark. Lauren James. <laughs> Ellie Jones. <laughs> With the finalist prize for the Batsford Prize for Fashion, Kira Little.
with First Class Honours and with the Art Design and Performance Visual Culture Prize and with the Art Society Portsea Island Award, Gaina Mashore. <laughs> Hajira Muzamil. with the Art Design and Performance Studentship Award and with the finalist prize for the Batsford Prize for Fashion, Emma Nicholson. <laughs> Kelvin Poon Chun Yin. <laughs> Chase Rex. <laughs> Shannon Small. Ella Nicole Souter. <laughs> Bipana Thapa. <laughs> Chloe Truffitt. <laughs> Shivanjali Verma. With first class honours and with the prize of finalist in the Graduate Fashion Week YKK Award for Accessories and with the Graduate Fashion Week Talent of Tomorrow Award and with the finalist for Tasuti Sportswear and Leisurewear Award, Catherine Jane Watts. <laughs> Sophie Wilby. With First Class Honours and the Batsford Prize for Fashion and with the Graduate Fashion Week Talent of Tomorrow Prize, Yagaili Zariti. <laughs> for Bachelor of Arts in Graphic Design, Aisi Adusu. <laughs> with First Class Honours and with the Bite the Ballot Commendation, Tom Acethorpe. With the Bite the Ballot commendation and with the prize of membership of ISTD, Ayan Ali. <laughs> Gio Amparo. <laughs> Elizabeth Ardley Walker. <laughs> with the Bite the Ballot commendation, Brandon Atwood. Harrison Beard. <laughs> Leanna Brown. <laughs> Matthew Clark. <laughs> Ralph Clayton. With First Class Honours and with the John Barrable Innovation Award and with the Strong Island Ones to Watch Award, Hannah Coulson. <laughs> with First Class Honours and with the Art Design and Performance Studentship Award, Harriet Cox. <laughs> with the Bite the Ballot Commendation, Jodie Dixon. Lucy Dobson. <laughs> with first class honours and with the prize of membership of ISTD with commendation and with the prize of SWDD Student Awards graphic design winner and with the RSPB poster commendation, Claire Dunford. <laughs> Abby Eid. With first class honours and with the CCI Placement Student of the Year Prize and with the prize of membership of ISTD and with the RSPB poster commendation, Ben Edwards. <laughs> with first class honours and with the prize of membership of ISTD, Ashley Elledge. <laughs> Tiffany Farthing. James Fisher. 
Jibo Bawangudi. Karina Gurung. With the Adobe ACA UK finalist prize, Jonathan Harris. With first class honours and with the prize of membership of ISTD and with the Bite the Bollock, Bite the Ballot. <laughs> Definitely bite the ballot. <laughs> Commendation, Josh Harris. <laughs> Bethany Haskell. <laughs> Shana Hill. With the prize of membership of ISTD and with the Adobe ACA UK finalist prize, Samantha Jackson. <laughs> Oliver Lang. <laughs> with first class honours and with the prize of membership of ISTD and with Bite the Ballot commendation, <laughs> Matthew Lay. Alice Livett. <laughs> with first class honours and with the IBM mentoring commendation and with the RSPB poster commendation, Nicola Lockwood. class honours and with the prize of membership of ISTD, Amy Moore. <laughs> Ethan Muir. <laughs> Matawi Namnood. <laughs> Georgia Ockenden. <laughs> Maria Teresa Ogyogwa. Charlotte Pugh. Von Ramos. Tilly Scanlon. Alicia Kakirka. Hannah Smith. With first class honours, Emily Stewart. With first class honours, Christy Stewart. With first class honours, Hannah Storey. With first class honours, Anne Marie Taylor. With first class honours and with the Bite the Ballot commendation, Rhiannon Taylor. <laughs> with first class honours and with the Bite the Ballot commendation and with the prize of membership of ISTD and with the prize of having been shortlisted for poster for tomorrow, Alice Tucker. <laughs> Will Turner. With first class honours, Lauren Wade. <laughs> Shen Yang. <laughs> For Bachelor of Arts in Illustration, Harry Bedford. <laughs> Lucy Bertram. <laughs> Roshani Bowerman. Faith Bromley. <laughs> Kerry Brown. <laughs> Madeline Budgeon. 
Megan Bull. Paige Cherry. With the Art, Design and Performance Studentship Award, Joseph Chisholm. Toby Compton. With the prize of selection for the Aspects Platform Exhibition 2019, Sasha Jamjanovic. With the Portsmouth Guildhall Graduate Award and with the Strong Island Ones to Watch Award, Alwyn De Castro. With First Class Honours and with the Art Design and Performance Visual Culture Prize and with the Art Society Portsea Island Award, Abigail Fullwood. <laughs> Matt Gurr. <laughs> Jennifer Healy. <laughs> Wana Yalea. With First Class Honours, Florence McIntosh. <laughs> Jakob Mariansky. <laughs> Mickey Orchard. <laughs> Lucy Page. <laughs> with First Class Honours and with the WS Chivers Memorial Scholarship, Charlie Perio. With First Class Honours, Tamara Phillips. <laughs> Hannah Potter. <laughs> With First Class Honours, Katie Perkis. <laughs> Rhiannon Rice. <laughs> Chloe Rowe. Megan Shipton. <laughs> Calvin Squibb. <laughs> ben Stroud. <laughs> Louise Tag. <laughs> Oliver Theobald. <laughs> Sergey Traverso. Rebecca Arumovsky. <laughs> Saffron Star. <laughs> Laura Ward. <laughs> Hannah Wells. With First Class Honours and with the Made in Portsmouth CCI Global Award, Emma West. <laughs> ben Westlake. <laughs> Celeste Octray. For Bachelor of Arts in Musical Theatre, Toby Beecham. <laughs> Jessica Brooks. <laughs> Bradley Curran. <laughs> Marlin Ekman. <laughs> With First Class Honours, Emma Gooch. With First Class Honours, Brittany Hildreth. <laughs> Isabel Hook. <laughs> Catherine Jones. 
Adonis Katakos. With the Art, Design and Performance Studentship Award, Ellen Knowles. <laughs> Hannah McGee. <laughs> Emma Mills. <laughs> Lottie Molster. <laughs> Pascalina Ofori. Madeline Parsons. Savannah Robinson. Thomas Rogers. With first class honours, Bethan Roscoe. Shola Stunnell. Rebecca Thomas. With first class honours, Ryan Walker. Rosie Amber Walton. Milo Welch. For Bachelor of Arts in Photography, Joe Allen. <laughs> Megan Barnes. <laughs> Eleanor Bergman. <laughs> With first class honours, Alexandra Boru. <laughs> Sade Boyce. Sophie Chennell. Ryan Convery Moroni. Michaela de la Cruz. Kathy de Wavrin. Roberta Drabavicuti. Ashley Elliott Smith, Bernadette Fay, Claire Harrison, with first class honours, Callum Hartley, Kwame Yantua. Matthew Kingham. Kristen Nolden. Asia Lamana. Imogen Lihu. Nicole Marquis. Raul Mihail Moyes. <laughs> Chloe Muddiman. <laughs> Molly Amanda Murram. <laughs> Sasha Holly O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> Adriano Padiel Romero. With first class honours and with the Art, Design and Performance Studentship Award and with the Strong Island Ones to Watch Award, Jessica Parsons. <laughs> with first class honours, Natasha Ramos-Smith. <laughs> Francesca Reed. <laughs> Caitlin Reed. Emma Robbins, Andre Rodinu, 
Georgia Stanhope. Rayseb Trahano. Fan Wang. With first class honours and with the prize of selection for the Eight Aspects Platform Exhibition 2019, Oliver Whitehead. <laughs> Jenna Wickham. <laughs> this concludes the presentation of students from the School of Art, Design and Performance and today's ceremony. Today is of course all about our graduates and so it's appropriate that we now hear from one of them. Chancellor, I present to you Adam Sanusi to respond on behalf of the graduates. <laughs> Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen. Before I commence my speech, I would like to start by thanking my colleagues most of whom are here and some of whom aren't. I would also like to thank the University of Portsmouth for giving us the education we needed to graduate and providing the services needed for said graduation. And finally, I would like to thank the university again for making this meeting a 1 p.m. instead of a 10 a.m. <laughs> so to the University of Portsmouth and all its students, well, thank you. There's a quote I read by Napoleon Hill recently, and I relay this to you because I believe we've all had our fair share of failure and success stories. It states that victory is always possible for the person who refuses to stop fighting. Now, we'll never forget our first all-nighters, when most of us promise ourselves it will never happen again. <laughs> then comes our second, third, and all the rest that come before every other deadline. We've all had a fair share of sleepless nights and weary mornings. However, all of us sit here today with bright smiles on our faces because we put our blood, sweat, and tears into our work. And I don't mean that figuratively. Model making can be a dangerous process. <laughs> the Sagrada Familia, a building designed by Anthony Gaudi, is to this day regarded a masterpiece in art and architecture. The detail and effort Gaudi put into his work has led him to be recognized by many as the best architect to have lived. The same could be said for Leonardo da Vinci and his adoration of the Magi, both unfinished masterpieces. Even though this building and this painting are both unfinished, they are still successful because those who designed them not only had the knowledge, but more importantly, showed great persistence towards their work. Graduates, we entered this university to increase our knowledge so that maybe one day we could begin our own masterpieces. Many of us came after experiencing multiple setbacks, but we persevered through them and have grown immensely from the people we were during our first years. We never stopped fighting, and so today we claim victory. As we leave this ceremony today, hold firm the belief that you can achieve your goals because you have the courage and conviction to take on the challenges life throws at you. Graduates, well done on this victory. Open your sketchbooks, laptops, or minds as you plow through the setbacks as you start working on your unfinished masterpieces. Thank you, class of 2019, and good luck. Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The day is here. It has finally come. You are now graduates of the University of Portsmouth. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I know what it took to get to this point, having sat where you are over 25 years ago when I myself graduated from this fine university. 
It took many a late night finishing assignments in the library, which was not open 24 hours in my day, by the way. Sweat, tears, copious amounts of coffee, Pro Plus and Diamond White Cider. Thank you to you and your family and friends who sit in the audience today bursting with pride. They have been part of your journey and as such a part of the university. I am glad that I am here today to witness your graduation and be part of your happy day. If it is even possible today, your family and friends will be even prouder of you than you are of yourself. Bursting with joy and pride, but there also might be a slight sigh of relief. Relief that you have made it to the end, that panic calls home will cease. Relief that emergency parcels of food, top-ups of phone credit, bank balances, trips to and from the university, currying various items and people, and washing that somehow manages to find its way home will come to an end. Or was that just me? But what lays ahead and what is next? Well, firstly, let's think about the friendships that you have formed during your time at Portsmouth. Please hold these dear. These friends are your ready-made cheerleaders. They will be there for you and you for them during the ups and downs in your life and your career. The lessons that you have been taught whilst at university, please remember. These are your compass. You today leave university and walk out into a world that may seem uncertain, a world of work which has been utterly transformed and will continue to do so. I want you to really hear this message. Please do not worry about the future ahead. You may be one of the lucky graduates sitting here today that has already secured their first step in your career. If that's you, congratulations and well done. If not, I promise it will come. You may be busy applying for roles and receiving knockback after knockback, thanks but no thanks letters. You know what, that's okay. That was my story. It happened to me, rejection after rejection, before I secured my first role. I think it's fairly safe to say it made me stronger, more determined, and made me understand the importance of resilience. I did not give up, and I think I've done all right. You are equipped to deal whatever may come. You, work out, you, work, sorry, you walk out of the university a foot taller than the day you walked in. You have the skills, the knowledge, to deal with change and uncertainty. Focus on having a growth mindset. At some point, you may feel you just cannot do something and want to give up. At times like that, always remember the magic word, yet. Whenever you find yourself saying, I can't, replace I can't with I can't yet, because you can learn. You know that you have the ability to learn new things. You've spent several years here proving how good you are at doing just that. Always look up and see the world. Please, please stop looking at yourselves and the selfies you post and those of everyone else. The lens that you see in social media is exactly that, a lens, a filter which is not real. Do not compare your life and what is happening to you through this lens. Look up and look around. You have the ability to change the world by changing the immediate world that is around you. I want to give you one last piece of advice which was given to me recently. Put yourself first and last, and everyone else in between. Look after yourselves and find your purpose in the world. I want you to find your happy. This may not be immediate right now, or even front of mind. It is, however, important. Your purpose will guide you through life and ensure you grab it with both hands and be successful in whatever you choose to do. You have the potential to make the world a much happier place and to make people feel they belong. 
I wish you Godspeed and I wish you good luck. I wish you success however you define it. I wish you a happy and fulfilling life. Now go out into the world, change it for the better, but make sure you take a moment and celebrate today first. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I now declare this congregation closed. Please be upstanding for the academic procession.